So exactly what are Facebook ads? We're going to answer that question in this video. And these are what Facebook ads look like. This particular example is one to get page likes. And you can see you've got the logo, the name of the business, a nice headline that spells out what the ad's all about, an attention grabbing picture, some details about the business, and you can click to like the page. This is what it looks like on the desktop news feed. Then this is what it looks like on the mobile news feed. Very similar, but you can see obviously it's taking into account the fact that it's a much smaller footprint. Let's move this along here. And then in the right column on Facebook, you're going to have a smaller one as well like this. And there are all sorts of different types of ad that you can get depending on what your ad objective is. You can see them all listed here. So how do Facebook ads work? Well, the basic principles behind Facebook advertising are PPC and PPM. If you're familiar with internet marketing, you will have heard the terms before. But if you've mostly handled your advertising offline until now, you may not have. PPM means you pay per impression, or to be more specific, you pay per 1,000 impressions, hence the M. And your ad will show on Facebook and you'll pay regardless of whether anyone clicks on your ad or not. And this is perfect if you're trying to get exposure for your brand and you aren't worried about making any direct sales. PPC stands for pay-per-click. And as I suspect that this is what most people watching this video are going to be more interested in, this is what I'm going to concentrate on for the remainder of the video. Now, as an advertiser, when you're buying a pay-per-click ad, you only pay when somebody actually clicks on one of your ads. And this means that you'll never need to pay for an ad that's unsuccessful. So if no one clicks on your ads, you don't pay a penny, and you'll still have gained exposure for your brand from it. Now the price that you're going to pay for each click depends on a number of different factors. It depends on the niche that you're in, the keyword that you're targeting, and how many other marketers are targeting that niche or keyword. Now, pros and cons to both, of course. The bigger the niche and the more popular the keyword, then the higher the cost per click, otherwise known as CPC. But the more likely you're going to be able to reach a large audience. The converse is also true. The less popular the niche and keyword, the lower the CPC. But chances are that fewer people will see your ad, let alone click on it. Like most of us, Facebook are in business to make money. So the more you're prepared to pay per click, the more often your ads will get shown. Likewise, the higher your budget for any given day, the longer your ads will be repeated. And this process is known as bidding. And Facebook are very flexible about this. Although it's called bidding, it's not like an auction. It's not a case of the person who bids the most gets shown exclusively and everybody else can get lost. It just means that the highest bidding ad will be shown the most often. You can bid lower and your ad will still get shown for that keyword, but just not that much. And this is good because it means you can test out an ad without spending a lot of money per click. If it's effective, it'll get clicked on regardless of how often it gets shown. You can then scale up, pay more and get more clicks. If the ads are dud, well, it doesn't matter. It won't have cost you much, if anything. Now, of course, the holy grail of PPC is to find keywords that get searched for often but don't have a lot of other marketers bidding on them. You then write an ad that targets potential buyers while discouraging people who are merely curious and are not likely to take you up on your offer. Master that skill, and it's literally like having your cash flow on tap. 
To create an advertisement on Facebook, it's very simple. You come here to facebook.com forward slash business. Click here where it says create an advert and then just simply follow the on-screen instructions. It's very simple. So what's the difference between advertising via Facebook ads and advertising via Google AdWords? Well, there are certain similarities. First of all, both Facebook ads and Google AdWords are pay-per-click or PPC. At least Facebook does have a PPC option. And both allow you to set a cost per click, otherwise known as a CPC, and a budget. Both will show ads which pay the highest most often. Both allow you some degree of targeting. And both have different ad types, which enables you to match the ad to the target audience. But that's about where the similarity ends. So let's take a look at some of the key differences between advertising on Google AdWords and advertising on Facebook ads. Now, when someone does a search on Google, AdWords ads are shown in the SERPs, that's the search engine results pages, and they're generally shown down the right-hand column and sometimes across the top of the results. And you can see they usually say ads or sponsored results. And you can also show an ad on somebody else's website via Google's AdSense program, meaning you can reach a very wide audience with Google AdWords. AdWords are also the best known and most respected form of pay-per-click advertising, but they're also the most highly competitive. Facebook ads, by comparison, are seen only on Facebook and Instagram now that Facebook has acquired it. So it's not so wide an audience, so it's not as expensive. Well, most of the time anyway. But the thing about Facebook ads and where Facebook ads really score over Google AdWords is they offer more precise targeting, especially when you're advertising on Facebook itself. Now, let me give you an example of how this works. Let's say, for example, you have a store selling wedding dresses. You can set it up so that only women who list their status as being engaged and live within a certain distance of your bricks and mortar store are going to see that ad. Nobody else will. Other women who live within that certain radius but are single or married already and therefore aren't going to be interested in a wedding dress, uh, they're not going to see your ad. Likewise, women who are engaged but live further away than the distance that you've set and therefore you know it's too far for them to go and pay a visit to your wedding dress shop, they're not going to see the ad either. So you can really drill down and only make sure that your target audience actually sees that ad. Likewise, if you run a site on giving dating tips for guys, you can make sure that only men who list themselves as single see your ad. Men who list themselves as being married or in a relationship, they're not going to see your ad at all. So they're not going to be interested in buying your ebook or signing up to your membership site for dating tips. So there's not a lot of point in showing them that ad. And this is where Facebook advertising really scores is because you can really zero in on a very, very specific type of person, your ideal customer. You can decide what he or she is. And then you can make sure that only those people who fit the very narrow criteria see your ad. And therefore, they're more likely to buy your product or service and you're more likely to make a successful sale. That's the sort of thing I mean. The biggest difference, though, is that when people do a search on Google and see an AdWords ad, they are actively looking for something. 
you know you go to google you type in your search term and you're looking to find something and you see the result and you see the adwords ad now people come to facebook to connect with friends and not specifically to buy products or services. You must therefore use your Facebook ad to create a demand, not just satisfy it. And that's the biggest difference. So you really need a different type of advertising strategy when you're advertising on Facebook compared to advertising on Google AdWords. The massive benefit of Facebook ads compared to other forms of online advertising is the ability to target your audience strategically and very, very carefully. And Facebook advertising has the advantage of giving you access to huge amounts of information about each member and users on Facebook generally share details such as their age, their profession, their marital status, their location, hobbies, interests, and much, much more. And this gives you the ability to pick exactly who you want to see your ads. So, do you want your ads to be seen by inner city teenagers? Or would you rather they were seen by women based in the suburbs who were in a relationship? Or by local business people? The reason why this matters is that it allows you to target the precise audience for your product or services. So if you have a shop selling wedding dresses, you will probably want to target women in relationships, probably engaged, and living locally. If you were selling computer games from an e-commerce store, you'd want to broaden your ads to target everyone in the country, or even all over the world if you're selling it via a digital download, for example. And you'd want to target mostly males in their teens and twenties who listed gaming as one of their hobbies. This way, you drastically reduce the amount of people who aren't likely to buy clicking on your ads. And you ensure that all of your money is being spent on worthwhile and useful advertising. So anybody who is not going to be interested in your product or your service is not going to see the ad and therefore is not going to be a waste of money for you. Okay, now let's look at the different targeting options that Facebook has because they do have quite a few and the sort of targeting option that you're going to choose is largely going to be dependent, of course, on what your product or service is. Now you can create a custom audience if you want. You can use email addresses, phone numbers, Facebook user IDs or app user IDs to create and save addresses that you'd like to show your ads to. So you can make sure that only people who you specifically selected will actually get to see your ad. Nobody else will. You can also choose by location, age, gender and language. And basically these are the most basic demographics of the audience that you want to reach. You can choose by interest, you can pick specific interests that are important to your audience. And these are determined by what people are connected to on Facebook, such as pages or apps. So if you're in a hobby niche or you're in a business niche, you can zoom straight in and only target those particular people. You can also select your audience based on connections. So you can set your audience based on whether or not they're connected to any of your pages, apps or events. Or anyone who has a friend connected to what you're advertising will see their friend included in your ad. And this can increase the likelihood that they'll find your ad relevant and they'll find it relevant enough to engage with it. Now, keep in mind 
that selecting multiple options for connections will limit your audience to people who only fall under each parameter. So, for example, if you wish to target your fans and friends of fans, you'd probably be better off using two separate ads, one for fans and one for friends of fans, because selecting both parameters for one ad will target only people who are fans and have friends who are fans. So it does sort of uh, work its way through, so it um, can limit you. You can actually limit the amount of people that see your ad. This is the whole point. It is to sort of narrow down rather than broaden um, the advertising base. And, of course, there are more categories as well. Um, you can select people based on any Facebook or partner categories that you've requested access to. Although you need to keep in mind that some data is only available to advertisers in the U.S. because Facebook is, of course, a U.S.-based company and data protection laws apply in various places. Now, let's look at a few tools that can help you to select the right audience. The first one is Ads Manager, and as it says here in their Help Center post here, you can create and run your ads, target your ads, set your budget, see how your ads are performing, and see your billing summary, payment history, and payment method info. And you can find out and access it by going to facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash manager obviously you do have to have some ads running in order to manage the other one is power editor and this is it says designed for larger advertisers who need to create lots of ads at once and have precise control of their campaigns and you can find it at facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash manage forward slash power editor and you have to have the right sort of browser to make it work and it's basically an updated version of ad manager finally you can use audience insights to get a really good look at the sort of people who are looking at your advertisements and they give you a lot of information things like demographics page likes activity purchases etc and as you can see from this screen grab that they've got in the help center there's a lot of uh, information here, a lot of uh, easy to follow graphics and that sort of thing. And they do have a lot of information on how it works. And there is actually a video on the subject that explains it probably better than I can. So if you come here to facebook.com forward slash business forward slash news forward slash audience hyphen insights, you'll be able to find out all about it. In this video, I want to talk you through some of the different types of Facebook ad. Now, Facebook used to have lots of different types of ad. But these days, they've narrowed it down to just a few. And I suspect that these were probably the most popular ones anyway, and they've um, discontinued the ones that people weren't particularly interested in. So let's talk you through some of the different ones. And the first one is a promoted post. And the supported placements are the right column, the mobile feed, and the news feed. And this is a great way of getting a larger audience engaged with an important piece of content or promotion. And for a set budget, you can boost a post which will increase its visibility in the feed of people who like your page as well as their friends. Then there's a boosted post, which is slightly different. And the supported placements are the right column, mobile feed, and news feed. And it's available to pages with 50 likes or more, and it's a simpler version of the promoted post. And you choose fans of your page and their friends, or you can choose to select targeting criteria. Then there's a domain ad and the supported placement is in the right column. And domain ads are essentially adverts that appear in the sidebar and point directly to a website that you're hosting. It's a similar way to um, a Google AdSense ad. And they are perhaps the simplest form of ads and are composed of a simple heading and a block of text. 
Then there's the multi-product ad. And the supported placements are the news feed and the mobile news feed. And multi-product ads display multiple items on a slideshow type display that lets users browse and shop right from Facebook. And this is incredibly powerful for e-commerce stores and it means you're only really posting one ad to promote a whole range of different products. And it's also good if you've got um, a bricks and mortar store or something like that. You can use this type of advertisement again to highlight your products, showcase your products. Then there's page like. And the supported placements are the right column, the news feed and the mobile news feed. And this is basically an advert for your Facebook page. And with these, what you're trying to do is increase the number of likes so that you can generate a bigger audience to market to. And this is really part of a long-term strategy. You're probably not going to make any direct sales from this sort of thing, but you are going to get more people to like your page, you're going to get more fans, and you're going to grow your audience slowly over time. So it's something to plan for the long term. Then there are video ads. And the supported placements are the right column, news feed, and the mobile news feed. And, as the name would suggest, video ads let you showcase a video. And they're good for getting likes and they're powerful for video marketing. Then there are app ads. And the supported placement is in the right column and the news feed. And if you've built a branded app for Facebook, then this is how you can promote it and encourage downloads. Then there is an event ad, and the supported placements are the right column, news feed, and mobile news feed. And as the name would imply, events allow you to advertise events. And these can be useful for increasing interest for a company launch event, for instance, or for a conference. Or if you've got um, a bricks and mortar store and you're doing an in-store promotion, you could use this sort of an ad uh, to advertise it. Or if you're a band or something like that and you want to get people to come to your next gig, then you can use an event ad uh, to get people there. Then there's the offer ad. And the supported placements are the right column, news feed and mobile news feed. And an offer advert is useful for companies who want to market a special offer, as the name would imply. And anyone who clicks on your ad will be emailed a code that they can then use to redeem your special offer. And it's great for encouraging sales. So that, of course, begs the question, what ad type should you go for? Well, that depends. As a general rule, you'll want to use the domain ads when you're looking to generate direct conversions by selling a product, you know, such as an ebook. Meanwhile, the promoted or boosted posts make more sense for businesses trying to build followers and they represent more of a long term strategy. Getting fans for a page on Facebook can be very powerful as it allows you to market to them more often and it lets you strengthen your relationship with them. For e-commerce stores, there's clearly a big benefit in multi-product and offer ads. And for companies running events or for bricks and mortar stores running in-store promotions, event ads certainly make a lot of sense. Really though, you won't know which ad is the very best for your campaign until you try a few. You may be surprised if you compare the performance of a few different ads, so experiment with them for a bit and don't make assumptions. At the same time, you should try to avoid thinking of each ad individually and instead think of them as part of a larger campaign. In this video, 
I want to give you some tips for making your Facebook ads stand out. Now when you're advertising on Facebook, you're going to be allowed to have an image on your advertisement. And this is very powerful because it's the thing that people will see before they actually read the text. They'll see the image and the text comes later. That's just the way your brain works. So when you're using images, you should use quality images. Preferably, you should use ones taken specifically for the ad. Or failing that, you want to get some professional images from a photo library, and there are lots of them online. But you want to make sure, first of all, that they look good. Secondly, that they adequately relate to what you're advertising. I know some people say, oh, do something completely different uh, because then it'll stand out. Well, maybe. But as a general rule, you want to make sure that if, like uh, in the last slide, we were showing an image of a dessert, you would want to make sure that that image fitted something to do with desserts. You wouldn't want to uh, have something like that for selling, you know, jeans or something like that. You want to make sure that it does actually relate to what you're advertising. Very importantly, you must make sure that you own the copyright or have the rights to use this particular photograph. You can't just simply go to Google Images, grab something offline from somebody else's site and then use that in your Facebook ad. That's going to land you in a whole heap of trouble. So basically make sure that you own the copyright or that you have the adequate rights to be able to use these images. And also, you want to make sure that they're not likely to be seen on another ad because that is going to destroy your credibility. So you want to make sure that it is a unique ad. And as I was saying earlier, that's really why you want to make sure that you have a picture that has been taken specifically for this ad for you or by you and for no other purpose. Something else that you want to do in your ad is to use compelling copy. You want to draw people in by appealing to both their emotional and to their logical side. So you want to appeal to head and heart in equal proportion. You also want to have a strong call to action. You want to make sure that when people see your ad, they feel it's compelling to go ahead and click through and either make the purchase or go to your website or go to your Facebook page or whatever it is that you want them to do. But you must have a strong call to action. You should also use social proof to back up any claims that you have in your ad. And a good way to do that is to use testimonials. And if you're running a video ad, for example, getting video testimonials from previous customers can be very, very powerful indeed. But whatever you do, the testimonials should be genuine. You mustn't make them up. They must be real customers giving their real opinion. Now, some people say that you should put a question in the headline because this draws people in and gets them reading the rest of the ad. And especially if it's a question your audience can answer yes. Above all else, you should be credible. If your ad makes outrageous claims, then no one is going to take it seriously. So, for example, if you're advertising a Make Money Online product and you're saying... You can make a million dollars by this time next week. No one's going to take it seriously. But if the claim is you can make a thousand dollars by this time next month, well, maybe that has a bit more credibility. You know, most people are not stupid. They can tell when uh, you're making some outrageous claim that simply doesn't make any sense. You can also use the psychology of color to your advantage. And this is something that works on a sort of a subtle, subconscious sort of level. Um, 
studies have proven that older people tend to like blue, purple, and green, whereas younger people prefer yellow, red, and orange. So you can build this sort of thing into uh, your advertisement. In fact, you can actually take it a step further because different colors tend to relate to different things. For example, yellow tends to convey optimism, clarity, and warmth. Orange is considered friendly, cheerful, and confident. Red is exciting, youthful, and bold. People associate purple with things that are imaginative and creative. With blue, people tend to associate it with things being dependable, trusting, and wise. Green tends to be associated with things that are peaceful, healthy, and associated with growth. And grey is a balance, neutral, and calming. And if you think about it, if you think of big corporations, if you think of products that you go out and buy off your supermarket shelves, for example, look at the colouring of the packages, look at the colouring of the advertising, look at the colouring of company logos, and you can see the sort of message that they're trying to get across through the colours. And you can do that too in your Facebook ad. And finally, when it comes to your ad, don't sell. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but people don't like to be sold to. And the best ads never feel like ads. So if you want people to care about your product or service, you need to make them feel like you're delivering a solution to a problem or a need that they're facing. And one good way to come up with ideas is to look at other successful ads in other niches and apply those strategies and tactics to your own advertisement. Defining the objective of your Facebook ad is very important because the objective is going to set the pace for your entire advertising campaign. So everything else is going to be based around what your objective is. Now, some people get really puzzled and unclear about precisely what they want their Facebook ad to achieve. And you need to have a clear objective in mind for your ad. After all, if you don't know what you want, how do you know when you've got it? So you need to define this from the start. And actually, Facebook do make this very easy for you. So let me just give you an example here just to illustrate the point. Now, one potential objective would be to get direct conversions. And a conversion counts as someone going through the action that you want them to. So let's say the objective is someone clicking on your Buy Now button and buying your $10 ebook on the Ultimate Total Body Workout. And when the sale has gone through, that's a conversion. So it's making a direct sale from your website via a Facebook ad. Fairly straightforward. So what you do for this ad is you would target people who were in their 20s or 30s, or perhaps older, who listed the gym or fitness as a hobby in their Facebook profile. Next, you will create an ad that would show either in the sidebar or in their home feed. And in this ad, you will broadcast very clearly what it was you were selling and how much you were selling it for. So you will want to have a nice eye-catching ad. You'd want to have a picture of the uh, ebook cover, you'd want to have a nice graphic, perhaps showing somebody working out like we did in the last slide. You would want to just sort of have something that would scream out to anybody who saw it that exactly what this ebook was about. So you could eliminate anybody who didn't want to buy it, you see, because this is where Facebook advertising 
can be a little different from other forms of advertising in terms of approach. Now, in the past, you might have learned to save the price until right at the end, after you've already convinced the person to learn all about your product and to buy. And this is known as the ADA approach, which stands for Awareness, Interest, Desire, Action. Now, in pay-per-click marketing, because this is the version of uh, Facebook marketing we're going to focus mostly on, you're trying to avoid clicks just as much as you're trying to encourage them. And you don't want people clicking on your ads unless there is some chance that they might be actually willing to buy. And this is very important. Otherwise, you're going to lose your ROI, which stands for return on investment, because obviously there is a cost every time somebody clicks on your ad. So you don't want people clicking on your ad, going through your website, reading about your ebook, thinking, no, this isn't what I want. Um, I'm looking for an ebook on flower arranging or something like that. And then simply clicking away because then you've lost that amount of money that it's cost you. So you want to make sure that it's an investment, not an expense. People click, you pay, but they go to your site and they like the ebook and they buy it. That's the ultimate objective. So you'll make your ad with a headline that very clearly says something like, get the ultimate total body workout ebook for just $10. And this technique will work because anyone who doesn't want an ebook or isn't prepared to pay $10 won't click. So if someone wants a video, they're not going to click. Someone wants a free ebook, they're not going to click. So this means you can afford to increase your CPC and have your ad seen more often. And it also means you increase your chances of being seen by someone who does potentially want to pay $10 for your ebook. In turn, that will increase the percentage of clicks that result in a conversion. Objective obtained. Now, exactly what the objectives of your Facebook advertising campaign are will impact heavily on the approach that you use and will also be intertwined with everything from your cost per click to your maximum budget and to your ad design. Because obviously, if it's a $10 ebook, you don't want to pay more than $10 a click because you'll be losing money. And Facebook actually lets you set your goals right from the start. And the options that they give you are fairly wide-ranging and comprehensive. And these cover improving engagements of a post, getting more likes for your Facebook page, getting more clicks or leads for your website, getting more installs for an app, promoting your event or offer. And Facebook's evolving all the time, so they may have added more by the time you see this. Now, the more closely you define your objective, the greater your chance of achieving success with Facebook ads. Creating a cost-effective Facebook ad bidding strategy is incredibly important. Getting it wrong could leave you seriously out of pocket. One of the best things about PPC from the point of view of an advertiser is that it doesn't actually cost all that much each time someone clicks. As a rule, you generally pay only a few cents and up to you know maybe $5 for clicks. And this means you have a fair margin for error when it comes to ROI or return on investment. And if you're selling a product on your site, and let's say you make about $30 profit per sale, then you only need a small percentage of those clicks to actually result in a purchase to make a profit. Another great advantage of PPC marketing like this is there's no set cost for your clicks and the minimum spend is tiny. 
And this is how a huge company like Amazon can afford to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on their Facebook advertising, while smaller businesses and entrepreneurs can also afford to pay for some ads and compete with them on a level playing field. And it's highly adaptable and it gives you a gigantic advantage if you have a limited budget or when you're just starting out. Okay, I know what you're thinking. If there's no set budget, how can you calculate how much you're going to pay? Well, Facebook make this quite easy for you. Now, essentially, this works on a bidding system where you set your CPC, your cost per click, and this defines how often your ad shows. Now, like all of us, Facebook wants to earn as much money as possible. So the ads they show will be dictated by who is bidding the most. And each time there's a slot for an ad, all the relevant ones will be compared and the ones which bid the highest will be shown the most often. But of course, it doesn't mean if you're paying lower, your ad won't be shown at all. It doesn't work that way. It's not like an auction. So let's say you're willing to bid two dollars for each click well chances are that your ad will be seen frequently but it'll also cost you a lot if you're only paying five cents for each click your ad will be shown far more rarely but at the same time your overheads will be much lower each time someone does click on your ad and another important factor to consider when making this decision is your overall budget. You can set a maximum budget with most forms of PPC, including Facebook advertising. And this allows you to set a cutoff point and a cap on how much you're going to spend. So, for example, if you were to set a daily budget of $100 and you were paying $1 per click, after your ad had been clicked on 100 times, reaching your daily limit of $100, your ad would stop showing and you wouldn't pay anything more. And this way, you'll be prevented from running up a massive bill. You can also pay per impression. And this means you'll pay each time your ad is shown. And this is the default setting for advertisers but it's best avoided until you're certain that your ad is effective. Otherwise, you could end up paying for an ad that nobody clicks on. Unless, of course, you're looking for ways to build your brand and you're not interested about clicks. You just want to get out there. You just want to have people notice who you are and what your brand is, in which case paying by impression certainly makes sense. So how much should you bid? Well, that's going to depend on how competitive your niche and your keywords are. You can choose either automatic bids, and this means that Facebook bids for you, or you can choose to enter a bid manually. So if you're just starting out, it's probably best to use automatic bidding to begin with. Now, bear in mind that Facebook wants to make money from you. So initially, they're going to set this figure quite high. But because you may not know exactly what is a good bid and what is a bad bid, you're probably going to have to go along with it just to begin with. But the best strategy that I can think of is to keep it at automatic for a couple of days and see how well your ad performs and see how often it's being shown, see how many clicks you're getting, etc., etc. Then cut the CPC down and see how often your ad shows. And you want to keep reducing it until your ad is showing less often than you want it to and then you put the CPC up a bit so that it starts showing more frequently. And monitor your stats. Now, Facebook provides you with quite a lot of stats. So you want to monitor those and keep track of how your ad is performing. 
Next thing you want to do is to cut the daily budget down to one that you can comfortably afford. Now, remember, Facebook will set it for how much they want you to spend. So you want to cut it down to something that you can afford regardless of the CPC, because after all, you don't want to run up a huge bill and get into debt or anything like that. So once you've done this, you just have to experiment and tweak and test your ad for the best conversion. And it's something that you just have to play by ear most of the time because there are so many different variables depending on your niche, on the keywords that you're going after, on your target audience, and so on. So there is no hard and fast rule. You just have to play it by ear and work through, tweak, test, improve, and so on. And then eventually you'll get to a point where your ad is performing optimally and then you can just simply perhaps roll it out to a wider audience. But that is the best way that I know of to create a Facebook ad bidding strategy. In this video, I'm going to talk you through how you go about creating a Facebook page. And if you're going to advertise on Facebook, it's a good idea to have an outstanding Facebook page to tie everything together. And this will allow you to gain a larger audience to market to, and it will ensure that when someone does go to your page, they'll have only positive experiences. Creating a Facebook page for your business is very similar to creating a profile page for yourself, and you have many of the same elements such as information, a profile picture, and a cover image. Now, one tip here is to make sure you have strong branding that comes across in your page. A great logo makes a world of difference here, so invest the time and or money in creating a good one. Also, consider using a writer to fill in your details. A, you know, a professional copywriter to do that. And make sure that the writing style that you use matches the tone of your business. Now, they make it kind of hard to find the page to log in to create pages. So you want to come to this URL, which is facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash create dot php. It takes you to this page here, it says create a page. And you'll see that there are various categories that you can have for your page. It can be for a local business or place, a company, organization or institution, a brand or a product. It can be for an artist, band or public figure. It can be entertainment or a cause or community. Now, each of these classifications will have specific fields that are unique to your page type. And it's a good idea to have all the relevant information to hand before you start putting your page together. Then what you do is simply follow the on-screen instructions as they walk you through the procedure. It's all pretty straightforward. Uh, regardless of what type of Facebook page you're going to set up. They do make it uh, very, very easy to follow. One point that's common to all of these pages, though, is to have your logo as the profile picture. And this should be at least 180 by 180 pixels. And it's a good idea, if you don't already have a logo, to get one professionally designed because it's just going to give a really good image about your business. So once your Facebook page is set up, you can then tie it all together with your advertising and you'll find that things will flow very smoothly indeed. Split testing your Facebook ad is a surefire way to make sure that you're getting the best from it. Now, put simply, split testing means having more than one ad, monitoring which one converts the best, and then rolling out that ad to the majority of your ad viewers. 
and sometimes this is called a b testing and it works a bit like this first of all you have your facebook ad set and then you have two ads for the sake of argument let's call them ad a and ad b now an ad set defines a particular target audience and it's also used to define your budget your schedule and the bid type so let's say you're gonna have the two ads and you run ad a for X number of days or impressions you then note the number of conversions you then run ad B for the same number of days or impressions and again you note the number of conversions. Now let's say for the sake of argument that when you go through all the stats you find that ad B outperforms ad A. What you simply do is drop ad A and roll out ad B to everybody that you want to target with the ad. And you then repeat the process using the wealth of data that Facebook provides in its ad reporting to further refine your split tests over time. Now, Facebook provides a breakdown of your ad performance based on location, age, gender, ad placement, and more. And you can use this data to further refine the testing process. So you can create a new ad set and then target an audience based on a particular interest on Facebook, for example. And you can also split test where the ad appears on Facebook, whether it appears uh, in the sidebar or in the newsfeed, etc. How it performs on mobiles as opposed to people watching on PCs, etc. There's all sorts of different stats that you can use to your advantage here and you simply rinse and repeat and you do this for all of your ads now every time you create a new ad split test it against the old ad to see if it performs better so your old ad is the control that you're going to test against and of course if the new ad performs better well drop your old ad and go with the new one and if it doesn't well simply stick with the old ad for the time being and what you'll find is over time some demographics will respond better to one ad more than to others so you can then refine your ad campaigns serving one particular ad to a specific target audience and another ad to another target audience and because you can drill down and get very specific with who sees each particular ad this is one area where Facebook ads really score over say Google AdWords so you can split test and all the different demographics and you can make sure that every ad is performing optimally Facebook provides you with a ton of data that you can use to make sure your ads are performing efficiently. Let's take a look at some of the stats. The sort of statistics you can get are similar to those provided by Google Analytics, but in much greater detail. Let's look at some of the different metrics. First of all, you'll want to log into Ads Manager or Power Editor you'll be able to access a number of different statistics. First of all, there's the performance, and this is the results, reach, cost, budget, amount spent, and schedule. Then there's delivery, the reach, frequency, cost per 1,000 people reached, impressions, CPM that's cost per 1000 impressions and this is if you're doing CPM rather than PPC then you've got engagement this is people taking action post likes post comments post shares link clicks and page likes then there's video engagement if you're running a video ad 
and these cover impressions, video views, cost per video view, 10 second video views, cost per 10 second video view, reach, amount spent, average percent of video viewed, video views to 25, 50, 75, 95 and 100 percent. And this can help you to perhaps tweak your video ad to get people to watch it longer and to see it right through to the end. So you'll know when there's a point when people are starting to lose interest in your video and are clicking away and you can go back and perhaps re-edit your video to change that and make it more effective. Then there's app engagement and this covers mobile app installs, mobile app actions, cost per mobile app install, cost per mobile app action, app installs, app engagements, cost per app install, cost per app engagement, post likes, post comments and post shares. Then there's carousel engagement if you're running a carousel ad. Bear in mind not all of these statistics that we're going to go through here are going to apply to every single type of ad. So this is to do with carousel ads and carousel engagement and that includes the reach, frequency, impressions, clicks, unique clicks, CTR, unique CTR, amount spent, CPM, that's cost per thousand impressions if you're going that way, cost per 1,000 people reached, cost per click, cost per unique click, actions, people taking action, link clicks, CTR, mobile app installs, leads and conversions, key web page views and conversions, other website conversions, registrations, conversions, as to cart, checkouts, cost per mobile app install, cost per lead, cost per key page view, cost per other website conversion, cost per registration, cost per add to cart, and cost per checkout. Then there's performance and clicks. You can track the results, reach, frequency, cost, amount spent, ends, all the clicks, click-through ratio, cost per click, impression, CPM, link clicks, CPC per link, CTR per link. Then cross-device, you've got website actions, all of them, mobile app installs, website action value, cost per website action, cost per mobile app install. And you can also customize uh, the statistics that you want. And you can customize any number of sets of columns and save them however you wish to label or identify them. And each custom column set can include any combinations of metrics related to performance, engagements, videos, website, apps, events, clicks and settings. You can also take a look in the breakdown column and you can break down campaign data by delivery, action and time. Now, there are more stats too, but uh, I think that's enough to get you started. Now, at this point, you might be on information overload and not know what to do with all this data. It's best to download all this information to your computer and to save it. And then you can open it up as a spreadsheet. And you want to use this information in conjunction with split testing to see which ad version is performing best, see which audience segment you're targeting most effectively, and to tweak your campaigns to make sure you're getting the best value for your ad spend. You can adjust all sorts of metrics in a Facebook ad campaign. You know, quite frankly, it's mind-blowing. So ideally, you want to adjust your campaign so that, first of all, you're paying the lowest CPC or CPM for each keyword or audience segment, while still getting the maximum ROI. And it's a job that's never completed because there are always new ways of improving your campaigns and making them better. 
There are a number of third-party tools out there that can help you to analyse and make better sense of all the Facebook statistics. Um, I've got a few of them to show you here. Uh, some are free, some you have to pay for, but they're all worth checking out. Uh, the first one is Like Eliza, which you can find here at likeeliza.com. And this is for analyzing and monitoring the effectiveness of Facebook pages, which, of course, does tie into your advertising. As it says, it helps you measure and analyze the potential effectiveness of your Facebook pages. So if you're using um, your Facebook ad to generate likes, then obviously you want to make sure that your Facebook page is up to scratch. And as you can see here, they do... Uh, complete analytics, instant review pages, statistics, and it, this is actually a free tool. Then there's Simply Measured, which is simplymeasured.com. Then there's Sociograph, which is sociograph.io, and this is analytics for Facebook groups and for pages. And then there's Fan Page Karma, which is fanpagekarma.com. And again, they will analyze all the different reports from not just Facebook, but from all sorts of other social media. So there you go. Just a few ways that you can analyze how your Facebook ads, Facebook pages, and indeed your social media as a whole is performing.